Okay, <clears throat> so um, I'm starting another painting, um, kind of a coral reef type situation. Now, I'm going to probably explain this a little bit before I start doing anything. Um, okay, so the way I did the background. Now, I didn't do it in the form of uh, just painting back and forth. What I did it was kind of layer the top and then tilt the painting at an angle and just let it slowly make its way down and then come back in and slowly pull it down. So it was, it's more of like a blend and not, you can see, brush strokes. Um, anyway, so the colors would be um, ultramarine and uh, turquoise mixed together. But when it was still wet, because I wanted to do the coral, which this would be the coral back in here, from a distance. So um, it would be in a blue kind of tint. So after I got that kind of, it's still in a wet form, I I kind of use kind of like a sponge or a sponge and a, and a napkin and I started pressing into the area. So it kind of gave it a really loose but detailed connection. Kind of went into these. Um, now, it's a watercolor and trying to make something exactly the same watercolor is, is not going to happen. Um, but this is not realism. This is surrealism or <clears throat> almost abstract. But I just wanted to give an idea how this would be going and, and do a little couple of techniques on this one. Um, I'm going to do this in bright colors of the uh, coral. So that should have a totally left, different look to it. Um, still need to do some touch-ups here. Um, so now I'm going to go into this. Now I'm going to turn the paper because <laughs> a better angle for me. Um, so now, hang on just a sec. Now, if I was in scientific mode, um, this would be totally different. Um, but I am teaching just for regular people and doing, because I was a scientific illustrator, I don't need to do that anymore. I just paint whatever I want, however I want it, but still have that background of detail. So, um, Anyways, so it's going to be a little bit brighter than, than that. Here, let me get my sponge here. So the colors are going to be a little bit brighter. Now what I'll probably do is just pull some highlights. Let me get a different brush for that. So I'm just going to pull out the highlights. And bring some in from this direction. Okay, maybe I'll zoom in just a little bit more.
Now, the secret to this has always been color in, color out. Now, probably what I'll do is, um, because these do take long and I don't want to bore anybody with long videos, but I do want to show how I get there. Now, this is all random colors by moving it around I will now I did a cross pattern so in other words I pulled all the color out from this because it was this color and then started doing with a small brush angles to make the scaling um, so that kind of should tell you somewhat Well, maybe I'll just, for drawing and painting purposes. Sometimes I pull the color out, but since it's already blended out pretty, pretty much, I'm going to add a little white. Now, I have to say that it's going to take a little time because what I'm going to do is go a little faster than I would normally. Now these will blend out eventually and I would have to go back over this several times. It's just the way it is. But again, I'm not I'm just taking my time and building up layers. And it's not the fast, quick method. And as I've often said, there's nothing wrong with that. That's just a style. But there is not very many, well, I don't know. I'm showing, because I was a scientific illustrator for the museum, I needed to make detailed scientific drawings, so I needed to put the detail Just pulling the color out. Now, because these are peck fins, I'm just kind of dragging the paintbrush over so I can.
make it look like it has a little bit of a I also call these alternative watercolors because it's just a little different from what's out there. But as I'm sure there are some people that like the quick method and there's nothing wrong with that. But there's probably some people that would just like to take time on something and maybe do a detail thing. I don't know. Maybe everybody likes finishing everything in 20 minutes. It's not me, but so I'm just darkening it up the edges here in layers. Now, I also call this crosshatch. Um, it's kind of like the way I draw. Teeny strokes. So for the people that say, oh, I, I can't paint. I, the only thing I could do is draw stick figures. Well, this is all stick figures. When you start to look at my work, you'll see a lot of little squiggly things. Now, that is another method I use. I call it <laughs> doodle art. Um, and the reason it is because it's the way I paint. It's kind of like doodling. So there's a lot of cross hatching, scribbling techniques in here. And you can see the, the, the color is just slowly building up. How much time do, are we going on? Oh, 12. Okay, so I have a couple more minutes. Um, like I said, I, I don't really like to make these things long. I'm just trying to give you the essence and hoping that it makes sense of what I'm doing so that you can continue. After you've seen what I'm doing here. Now, I'll probably pull out a little height re reflect light on the bottom. And as I mentioned in other videos. I'm making this look easy and it's not that easy. People that, I mean, people just don't pick up a brush and start painting and, and, you know, just, you know, like they've been painting for 20, 30, 40 years. Um, it takes time. Anything takes time. You know, you don't sink a half-court shot, <laughs> nothing but net, two or three times on the first time. <laughs> it's, it's, it's years and years of practice to make it look easy. Now, I'm not saying that you can't do this. I'm showing you how to do it. Some people with a little bit more... Um, painting knowledge, it'll be easier. Some that don't, it'll take time. You could be, probably do this. It won't look exactly like this. It'll be your style. Um, but never give up. I don't know how many times I thought of giving up and it just forced myself to continue and continue and continue and eventually things did work out. I'm not saying that all of them will work out, but unless you force yourself to take the chance to improve, 
and understand that there is going to be some that you're going to keep on going and destroy. But in that destruction, you're going to learn what worked and what didn't. Anyway, so... Um, let's see how much time I have. Oh, 15, 16 minutes. Okay, I don't want to go any further. Anyway, I'll... I'll kind of explain what I'm going to be doing. So just basically this is what I'm doing right now. I'll be kind of pulling out the colors, adding some more. I won't touch this. This is in the background where the coral, you can't really make out certain things. But um, when I do the coral in this part, it's just going to be super bright like coral. I don't know what's going to happen with this. I don't know if I'm going to add more fish. And when you don't have a plan... You can't be disappointed. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't really have a plan. Things just grow. Have you seen my one of my relaxing videos? That's how it works. I don't really think about what's going to happen. I have a, a initial plan, but that just keeps growing. And hopefully it turns out. And like I said, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Um, anyway, so this is Steve Melendres. Thank you. Hello, um, I'm Steve Melendres, a model maker, illustrator, scientific illustrator, sculptor, design after history museum in Los Angeles. Done a lot of different things, um, but I'm going to be doing watercolor demonstrations of the techniques I've developed over the years. Um, and it's going to go from a lot of different directions. And also I'm going to be doing videos, uh, I call them video posters for my daughter. So a lot of stuff that I can leave to my daughter about her crazy dad. <laughs> so um, I'm taking a lot of different directions, but mainly three. Um, so anyway, that's my introduction that I'm going to attach to every thing I'm doing now. So I don't have to repeat this. Be careful out there.